Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. As we meet together today, we begin by remembering the Algonquin people whose traditional land we now gather in gratitude, and we acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land, water, plants, and animals many, through many generations. And we bear witness to the ongoing suffering caused by historical injustice, and we commit to seeking right relations today. So happy Easter, everyone, and thank you for joining us, Emmanuel family and friends. Um, here with us in the sanctuary is Russ and Michael and myself and Brian, and we are for leading service with you today. And today we are going to be uh, having communion together, so you're invited to have uh, some bread and juice ready, and so you can partake in communion when the time is right. And after our service today, there is coffee and conversations on Zoom, so please do Zoom by and join us over there for a time of fellowship together. So our candle is lit. It's a reminder that every space is sacred space. No matter where we are, we are in the presence of God. And today we are in the presence of the risen Christ. Let us join together in our welcome. Welcome to this sacred place of belonging where we embrace the sacredness of life and recognize the dignity of each person. Spirit filled with the image of God, the mystery in whom we live and move and have our being. Welcome to all who have no church home, need strength, want to follow Christ, have doubts. Welcome to visitors and to new and old friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, youth, couples, and single people. Welcome to people of all color, cultures, abilities, gender identities, and sexual orientations, to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioning believers. This day, we are all invited into God's love, peace, and justice. And let us join together in listening to Jesus Christ is risen today.
please join me in the call to worship. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Come, let us worship the one who is alive. He speaks to us in the dawning of a new day. God, we welcome you in the midst of uncertain and unusual times. The world is truly in turmoil as we look to you for hope and abundant new life. May Jesus' risen presence be our comfort and our sure guide in the days which, we, which lie ahead. And may the fear which is all around be faced knowing that you walk with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, children. I want to welcome you uh, to one of my best friends, Chipsy the Chipmunk. And he was sleeping one morning in his warm nest, and the sun came over the horizon, and he was thinking, oh, it's so nice just to stay right here in my nest and not get up and go anywhere. But something was happening, a voice, something inside him was saying, go to the river today. Go to the river today. As much as he wanted to stay in his little nest and sleep away all the day long, he slowly got out of his nest. And then with chipmunk speed, he raced towards the river, except when he got to the oak tree, he remembered that he had seeds buried there. And he stopped and he thought, I should dig up some seeds and have some breakfast before I go to the river. But the voice was telling him, go to the river, Chipsy. And so as much as he wanted to stop and eat all of his sunflower seeds he'd buried last winter, he raced off again. And then, oh my goodness, he came to the stump of the old maple tree. And he loved to climb on that stump and jump up way high and fall down right on the stump and go around it and up and down. And he had so much fun at the stump. But the voice was telling him, go to the river, Gypsy. Go to the river, Gypsy. So off he raced to the river fast as gypsies go, chipmunks go. And he got to the bank and he stopped and he went slowly up the bank of the river because he didn't know what was on the other side. And he slowly went up and when he looked over, he saw something he'd never seen before, ever. And there it was. There they were, beautiful yellow daffodils. He'd never seen them at the river before. They were so beautiful and so wonderful. And they were just the most amazing thing to see and to have happen on Easter Sunday morning. And so he went down to the river and he loved those daffodils. And they always reminded Chipsy of what a wonderful and beautiful day Easter was. So maybe at home today you want to draw Chipsy? Or you might want to draw some beautiful daffodils or anything that might remind you today of a new and beautiful day on Easter. So, Chipsy says goodbye this morning. Oh, thanks, Brian. Okay. Did those daffodils come from the garden at your house? Yes. Wow, <laughs> daffodils at the Copeland's house already. Folks, please um, I'm, join me in scripture reading. It's going to be Matthew. I'm reading from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. And you know this story, but let's listen again. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, 
do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. For he has risen as he said he would. Come and see the place where he laid. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is gone, going ahead of you to Galilee, and you will see him there. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings, and then came to him, took hold of, they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Often I'll ask a wedding groom standing at the front of the sanctuary how nervous they are, and I'll invite them to put out one of their hands just to see how much shaking. And a couple of summers ago, I'll recall, there was a young groom at the front, and I had asked him to do that, and he put out his hand, and it was shaking like a leaf in a hurricane. I thought it, but I didn't say it to him that this kid <clears throat> is going to faint on me, and nobody has ever fainted on me in 41 years of doing weddings. But the big day brings nerves. I wonder if you can recall a big day in your life when you couldn't sleep, when you kept waiting for that dawn to come. And then when you did get up, adrenaline just kind of overcame the whole of your body. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, as you heard, must have been pretty excited this morning. They rose before dawn. They left the house just, just as the first light was breaking. And they ran, it seems, in the text everywhere. They were always going quickly, it says, even to Jesus' tomb, I suspect. It's as if they knew that something was going to happen. It's the way you walk outside. And you smell in the air and you suddenly realize this is spring. There was something in the air. They knew that something was about to happen. And this wasn't a caretaking trip for them. They went off to the tomb to put lilies at Jesus' place. They knew, they had this deep intuition that it was going to be a big, a very big day. So off they ran 
just as the dawn was coming. And the scene that they came upon, Netflix could not have created. There were earthquakes, there were rocks flying everywhere, there was an angel descending. The gospel writer was sending a message. This was more than your ordinary Sunday morning. This was, yes, a very big day. We know and we trust that a new morning like this morning brings new hope. A Queen's Committee I sat on for a few years had three awards to grant each year. And in one of those years, the committee asked me if I would be so kind as to contact the people who had won the awards and make sure that they were going to accept. Well, sisters and brothers, it was one of my favorite volunteer activities ever. The recipients were overjoyed. I remember I called them and they were like it had made their day, it made their week, and I think it might have even made their year. And I suspect that all three of them have that award still on their resume. And it kind of left me feeling fantastic as well. So I finally put two and two together this week and realized what scholars have already noticed, that in the Bible, revelation from God usually, most often, comes in the morning. Good news is a morning thing. And if you didn't know it already, God, it seems, our God, is apparently a morning person. God has that first cup of coffee, that bowl of oatmeal porridge, and good news breaks out everywhere. Just as the first day of the week is dawning. The toughest question that someone asked this week is, have you seen the promise of and the hope of maybe, just maybe, breaking into your world today? And today, this morning, when bad news abounds, when terrible news abounds, when fear abounds, is there any promise, is there any hope of good news breaking into our world today? But there are signs. People on the front lines are going the second and the third and the fourth mile. The one that got me, that touched me this week, was a family who had mistakenly invited a, a couple to their Thanksgiving celebration. They got the wrong email address. And the young couple showed up at their Thanksgiving dinner, and they became wonderful and fast friends. Well, this week, the older couple have been isolated, and the young couple arrived at their home unexpectedly with a large bag of groceries for them. And as you watch the scene, all you can hear is from behind the screen door, a woman saying, thank you, I love you. And the young woman standing her appropriate distance behind the screen door outside replies in tears, thank you, I love you. Indeed, there are signs. In these uncertain and fearful times, we believe we believe in Jesus' risen presence. We believe, as the women believe, that something big was going to happen this day. And when the light dawned, they ran like the wind. Because my sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, a new morning always brings new hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join me in a brief moment of quiet reflection and of prayer this morning. Let us pray. God of hope and resurrection and abundant new life, break into our world this day. We ask in the name of the risen one, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, as we celebrate the good news on Easter Day, we give thanks for all the blessings which God gives to us and to our wondrous world. In response, you may wish to sign up for our pre-authorized receipt program or mail in or donate through Canada Helps to Emmanuel. 
We also remember the needs of those who are living on the street today. And we thank Center 507 here in Ottawa for its ministry over these many years to care for those who need food and support. And you can also donate to their ministry, Center 507, at their website. So friends, please give generously. So it's now that time that we offer our prayers, those that we hold in our hearts. And for those who are worshiping with us online on YouTube, you're invited to type in your prayers into the chat box that's on the right hand or left hand side of your computer. Please join me in prayer. God of grace, we come as people bearing witness to the mystery of your presence in our lives despite the uncertainty of what we are experiencing right now. We come as people bearing witness to Christ's resurrection in the midst of hardship and suffering. We come as Easter people singing hallelujah, even though we're not quite sure what it is that we are celebrating. And so we pray for all our varied concerns we give thanks for the blessings of Easter, for Easter bunnies, chocolates, and flowers that found their way to our homes. We give thanks for family and friends that will visit us by phone or text or FaceTime. We give thanks for the food that has made our way to our table despite the difficulties in getting it there. We give thanks for creation the sun that shines, the rain that refresh, and the plants that bloom. God, in the midst of uncertainty, we give thanks for the stories of our faith, for Easter hope in the midst of pain and concern, and so we pray. We pray for those who have died this past week, for their families and friends. We pray for medical professionals who work hard to care for the people who are ill. We pray especially for nursing home residents and staff and family and friends and health care leaders and all of us who care. We pray for essential workers who leave their homes each day to serve and provide necessary services that help sustain us all. God, our prayers are many some of them personal, some of them named publicly. And in the silence, we lift up the prayers that have been offered today, publicly and in our hearts. We offer our prayers, God, with the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, all who follow Jesus are now invited to this, his table. Wherever you are this morning, however you are dressed, we are made one in sharing the bread and the cup. God's love binds us together, and although scattered, we remain the community of faith in this place and in this time. Friends, let us share in this feast. I would invite you to join as I offer the great prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, you have called us and walked with us, your people, in every trial, in all uncertainty, through desert sands, through long years, through oppression and fear. And you have always been with us. And then in your time, you sent your own child, Jesus, to bring hope to a world that languished in despair, 
and he brought liberation to all who lived on the edge and planted the seed of new and abundant life. Thank you, God, for your great love. Thank you for the people who have reached out to us with care and compassion. Thank you for our political leaders who are facing the unknowns and challenges of this time. Thank you for our healthcare workers who walk into the uncertainty. And especially today, for all the staff at nursing homes, care homes, and retirement homes, that they may feel your spirit's wind give them strength. Thank you for the first morning light, especially after difficult days and weeks. Thank you for the newness of the earth and the trees in the season of spring, for daffodils unfolding beauty and tulips color, the purple iris in the side garden and the snowdrops by the boulevard. You infuse the earth with your artistic hand, O oh God, and paint a landscape of such wonder for us. Thank you, Holy One, for the saints who are gathered here on our YouTube site this morning for their faith, their gifts, their talents, their care, and their love, for all that makes them so special and indeed unique. Thank you for this community of faith and all that it means to us and the hope that we find here. And for the early morning, when your word is revealed afresh to us, we praise you. And now we ask, gracious God, that you would send your Holy Spirit upon these elements, bread and cup, and upon your church gathered and scattered throughout this city and the world, and to make us one. Bless what we do as we remember Jesus, bread broken, cup poured out, new life given on Easter morning. In his name we pray. Amen. As Jesus broke bread with the disciples and gave thanks, we break this bread and do it in remembrance of him. And in the same fashion, we pour this cup as we share in Jesus' fellowship do this in remembrance of him. And taking the bread, I invite you to eat. Give thanks, for it is Jesus, the bread of new life. And taking the cup, give thanks and drink of it, Jesus, the cup of new life. And friends, I invite you to join me in our post-communion prayer this morning. Thank you, God, for revealing Jesus' presence in bread and in cup, especially in these difficult days. May the taste of his risen life and the sound of his voice lead us through this time to a new morning when the day of joy will dawn and we and all your people may celebrate and give thanks. Amen. And I hope I would invite you to listen as the St. Mark's Church Choir sings this joyful Easter tide. <laughs>
Pay attention to the dawning of a new day. Pay attention to the mystery we cannot answer. Pay attention to the presence of Christ. And may the promise of Jesus Christ be with you this Easter day. Amen.